The Great Search brought to you by Digikey Native Fruit Lady Ada. What is The Great Search this week? Okay, this week we're looking at quad microphone ADCs. So, you know, oftentimes uh, folks, when they're doing an audio interface, you have stereo left, right, you know, microphone in left, microphone in right, line in, or maybe speaker left and right. It's not that usual that people have multiple audio inputs. However, um, this Echo Dot Teardown has four microphones because you need four microphones to do uh, voice location. And on board is this chip, the ADC5140. It says TI on it, so I know it's a TI chip. And I thought, let's take a look at it and then maybe even make a breakout for this uh, nifty chip because if it's in the Echo Dot, it's probably a pretty good chip. So um, going to DigiKey, uh, you can just search for ADC5140. And um, there's an eval board, and it's like 300 bucks. <laughs> it's like 250 bucks. I'm sure it's a great eval board, and it has like this XMOS chip, which if you remember from INMPI, we talked about this XMOS chip. It takes the ITOS data and actually does a lot of the algorithm work for you um, to like kind of automatically give you... Uh, they have like a, you know, a ready-to-go program that takes this quad microphone data and give you gives you the location data. Um, I think here's like the microphones are on the square here somewhere. Anyways, um, so let's check out the chip itself. So I2S codecs, even though I wouldn't necessarily call them ADCs and DACs, I mean, yes, they are, but they're kind of like not normal ADC and DACs because they use I2S. They're still under the special purpose ADC DAC data equity. Like, I wouldn't normally call them data acquisition, but like technically they are. So just be aware that this is where I2S codecs live. Not a big deal, just uh, so you know. And um, if we look up this data sheet, this is in fact a quad channel 768 kilohertz Burr Brown audio ADC. So the Burr Browns are they're really nice quality. Um, if you look into this in more detail, there's actually three chips in this family, the TLV320 ADC X140. Um, and each one of them has slightly different um, uh, power supply, uh, sorry, power supply rejection or I think dynamic range. I'm trying to remember, but like they, they all have slightly different qualities and you're gonna pay more for the slightly higher quality versions. This chip is really neat because it's kind of straight to the point, and I like that. You have four inputs. You can have analog or PDM digital inputs. So I like that. You have a lot of choices. Um, there's some power. It has a uh, microphone bias output, really handy if you're doing electric mics um, to keep it nice and quiet. It has analog and digital control. It has a 1.8 volt regulator built in. So you give it 3.3 volts and then you don't have to worry about giving it to power supplies. It'll, it'll handle the 1.8 for you. You can communicate with it over I squared C or SPI. I squared C tends to be a little bit more likely, you know, like I've seen more chips that are I2S um, codex be controlled over I2C, but you know, you never know. It's good to have SPI there. And here's the thing I really like about this. Besides the shutdown pin, which is very handy for when you want to, you know, you, you keep it low so you don't have any noise come in. Especially for speakers, you want it to be muted. But you notice you don't need an M clock pin. You have F sync, B clock, and data out. And so you don't need an M clock pin, which makes it really good for use with a Raspberry Pi computer. There are some chips that don't have an M clock or like driving the M clock for I2S is like it's unavailable, or it's hard to use or something. Especially the Raspberry Pi, it's one of like the most popular boards that I use that does not have a master clock pin. So not needing it, because it has a PLL built in, is quite nice. So look for that. If you don't see M clock, you're good. Um, it does, this data sheet is quite long. So like, you know, I was looking at this and I was making a breakout and it kind of, it goes on. Like there's, there's a lot. There's like a lot of filters and settings. And like, you kind of see this is like, I'm getting into like, page 60 and like 100. And I was like, well, you know, I'm getting a little terrified um, to get this up and running. You know, it, it, there, there is a Linux driver that's out of tree that I could use, but 
I was like, oh man, there's just so much configuration to do. Um, like, look at like this mixer. Oh goodness. So I was like, well, maybe there's something. Although I really liked how simple the schematic was. I love this this simplicity. So I was like, you know what? Let me look for some other quad ADC chips and see what I can find. So here's uh, you know my quick tip. I can always get these. I did design a board for this in case. But let's go for an ADC. So DAC would be a speaker driver. ADC is a microphone driver. Um, active. Uh, I don't really care if it's I2C or SPI, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. I do want it uh, surface mount, of course, and I want it to be uh, four channel, quad channel. So I, I click that. And I don't need it to be part of this family. I just was like, well, what other quad microphone drivers are available? And this was kind of handy. So view similar. Um, so, oh, by the way, to, you're wondering like, well, how does this even work? Like you have four channels of audio on a stereo iTwist connection. It uses time division multiplex, multiplexing, TDM, so that for each channel, it sends, you know, multiple chunks of, of data. So you, like you have, your driver has to know to read, you know, 64 bits of data on each channel and then you get the 32 bits out or 16 bits on each, 32 bits on each channel, cut it in half and you get 16 bits for each microphone, you know, two on the left, two on the right, basically, but whatever. Um, okay, so let's look at what we've got. So what I thought was interesting is this, I don't know how this is sorted, but there was this chip um, right here, the PCM1840, and it's also a, a quad, it even says quad channel, 32-bit, um, 192 kilohertz audio. And it was even the same package, which I thought was neat, and it's I2S PDM, I2S TDM. But notice that it didn't, doesn't say I squared C or SPI, which I thought was interesting. So when I went to this board and I opened up the data sheet, the data sheet for this, if you look at the simplified block diagram and you look at this, this chip's simplified diagram, hold on, going to get there, is you'll notice that it's like, wow, they just totally use like the same graphics. But what really is going on is this is almost exactly the same chip. Now, there, there's a couple differences in it, you know, with, with the pinout um, because the PCM1840, what's interesting is that it's, it's almost pin compatible, but it doesn't have an I2C interface for configuration. Instead, it uses only bootstrapping pins. So FMT0, Format0, and MD, which I think was mode zero, there's these one, two, three, four, five, these five pins, and that's how you configure the output. So you, you can set some different uh, filters, and you can set up... Um, how you want the TDM I2S out to come out. And you can only use I2, sorry, you can only use analog microphones, you can't use PDM, but it's a lot simpler to use. Data sheets only 40 pages long. They show you here's, you know, the couple, there's a couple different settings. Look, you can only do four things with it. You can have it be, you know, four channel output TDM, two channel, two channel, you can either have it be, um, slave mode, which means something clocks it to get data out or the other way around where it pushes data out on its own clock. And I kind of liked that this was a just hardware bootstrapped chip. I thought this was a very interesting chip. So I'm glad that, you know, when I looked at one chip that I thought was interesting, take a look around, see what other chips are in that family. Even if this one has a totally different part name, but it turns out that this will work much better for me. Um, it's less expensive. It, there's tons of them in stock. There's like 12,000 in stock or something ridiculous. What's yeah. the price? And this is about 225 in quantity. Um, but it's got that reliability of a, a TI I2S chip. Can I find less expensive ones? Sure, but I want something that I know will work. And I know that TI, when they're making these, they're making these for companies doing voice assistant. This isn't a new thing. TI and Burr Brown have been doing this for a long time. So... I trust that I'll be able to get good data out of it. I won't have to worry about, um, you know, as, as long as I follow their layout, I won't have to worry about noise creeping in or, you know, like weird configuration settings. 
So this chip is really cool. I was really psyched to see this. So I picked this up and um, here's the breakout that I'm designing for it to get started with experimentation. So because I don't need to write a driver for it, I can start up a Raspberry Pi and just load up this simple ALSA I2S driver with quad inputs and TDM, you know, TDM uh, multiplexing. And then I can just pipe the data in and I'm going to see hopefully it'll just work. And that'll be really cool because I don't want to have to deal with a kernel driver if I don't have to. So that's my great search chip. Um, today's tip is always look for similar chips. Even if the part number is not the same, you might find something better than what you've already found. That's a good search. 1840. Digging it. Where in the world is